Hi folks, my name is Jeremy Stretch, and in this video we're going to be looking at two new types of custom fields that were introduced in NetBox version 3.2. Uh, these are the result of a feature request, uh, number 7006, uh, to implement custom object fields. So essentially this is a new type of custom field that allows NetBox to model a related object or multiple related objects. Um, let's take a look at how we might use this. When we go to create a custom field now in NetBox 3.2, and a quick caveat, I am using the beta 1 release of NetBox version 3.2. Uh, if you're viewing this video at a later date and using the final product, it might look a little bit different, but the core concept should be the same. Uh, so let's create, try creating a custom field. You'll notice in 3.2 and later that we have a couple new types here. Down toward the bottom, we have object or multiple objects. So an object would be a single other related object in NetBox, and all we have to uh, specify is the object type. Uh, let's use an example. Like, let's say we have a number of tenants defined in NetBox and every tenant has, has uh, sites assigned to it, but each tenant also has a primary site. Well, we don't have a way to, to easily model that in NetBox. I guess we could use tags or something like that. Uh, but with a new custom object field, we can ma map a tenant object directly to its primary site. So let's create uh, a custom field on the tenant model. We're going to call it uh, prime, we're going to give it the field name primary underscore site. Uh, we're going to give it a nice label of primary site. Uh, the type is object and the object type, all right, so this is the, the type of object to which we're, we're referring, is going to be site. And that's under the DC map. So again, this gets a little bit tricky, but the model that the custom field is going to appear on is tenant, and the type of object that we're referring to is site. Uh, we can leave the other values as they are. We'll go ahead and create that field. Okay, everything looks good. Now, if we go to one of our tenants, let's go find a tenant here under organization. Let's go with Cyberdyne Systems. Uh, we see now that the primary site custom field appears. Uh, if we go to edit this, notice that we have now a choice of sites, so we can select a site. And these are sites that exist in NetBox, right? This is uh, a list of sites that is pulled from exactly the same as the site list that you would see in the UI or the API. Uh, let's go ahead and select a site here. Akron, Ohio, sounds as good as anything else. Now we've assigned that primary site to the tenant object. Uh, let's take a look at what that looks like in the API. So if I go down to the REST API, the browsable version of that, and I go to tenancy and the tenants list, and then I find Cyberdyne, happens to be the first on the list here. Under custom fields, we see two entries, right? Cust IDs, that's the first one that already existed in NetBox, and then here's our new primary site custom field, and we see pretty much exactly what we should expect, right? This is an, uh, a brief representation of the related object. Uh, here's the site name, uh, it's slug, what we display, and then here's a link if we wanted to see uh, to retrieve that site itself from the REST API. Uh, so that should look exactly, you know, pretty much what you'd expect. Um, I did mention we have the option of doing multiple objects as well, so let's see what that might look like. Uh, let's consider a, oh gosh, I don't know, let's, let's think about a provider network that maybe has two primary circuits. Or actually, let's stick with site, maybe that makes more sense. Um, let's say that for every site, we have an A and a B circuit that we want to define, or let's not distinguish them that far. Let's just say that you have um, maybe critical circuits, we'll call it that, right? Um, how would we, we label that? Well, one option is if you don't want to use a custom field is you could always um, create a, 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 you know, a different, uh, you could put a custom field on the, on the circuit, or you could use a tag or something to distinguish that. But for the purposes of our demonstration here, we're just going to use a, a multi-object custom field on the site model pointing to circuits. So let's do that. Let's go down to, again, we have to create a custom field. Uh, again, this is going to be on the site model. All right, we're going to call it, um, what is it, critical circuits? Sure, we'll leave it that as it is. The type now, instead of object, is going to be multiple object or multi-object. And the type of related object, right, so we're on, the custom field is going to appear on the site model where we are referring to the circuit model. Create that, let me see our custom field show up. And now if we select one of our sites, we'll go Albany this time. 
so we see critical circuits appear as a custom field, but nothing's been added there yet, obviously. So let's edit the site. Then down here under custom fields, we can select multiple circuits. Let's just go ahead and pick one or pick a couple circuits. I have no idea what's actually defined for the site, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, here's a couple circuits. We've uh, let's go ahead and pick three of them. Why not? How about those three? Sounds good. Now, when we look at the site, we see three individual circuits listed. We can link to them. It goes exactly where we'd expect it to go. Uh, and same thing here with the REST API, right? If we go to, uh, this is site three. If we pull up the Albany site and the REST API and go down to custom fields, we see our critical circuits field has an iterable or a list rather of three uh, you know, abbreviated objects, each pointing to the related circuit. Um, and that works exactly as, as existing custom fields do today or, or um, you know, foreign key relationships in the REST API. You can post an integer to, um, or, or a list of integers in the case of multi-object fields, and that will populate the, the values that you specify. Um, so a little bit you know, of additional flexibility, and you know, Vox already has uh, typically two or three ways of doing of modeling pretty much anything you might want to model, so we'll call this number three or four. Um, again, this is in 3.2 beta, so it still uh, might be, you know, we're still going through a process of um, formalizing it, but this should be pretty much how we expect it to end up in the final product. Um, hopefully this video was uh, useful for you and uh, go ahead and keep an eye out for additional features, uh, future videos that we'll be doing uh, in the run up to the 3.2 final release. Thanks.